Okay, guys, I know there's a lot of media hype at the moment about this potential perfect domestic season, but you know what wasn't perfect? That first game against RB Leipzig in the Champions League, okay? We need to improve big time, especially at home to Partizan. Home points in this group, absolutely massive, okay? So we need points from this one. Anything against Inter, absolute bonus. And in between, then if we can do a perfect domestic season, that's great, but we need to win this game against Partizan, boys. Come on. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 111 of Who Civic Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode we are now focusing solely on Europe for the rest of 2030. We play our second and third games of the Champions League group stage. We take on Partizan at home followed by a trip to Italy to take on Inter Milan. Also while that's going on we do have the potential to seal a perfect domestic season so if you are looking forward to this episode then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the save here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but we are coming into this one off the back of our first game in the champions league against rb leipzig at the end of last week we also had a mocha bigger and final in that episode as well if you missed that i'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner we did not get off to a good start if we scroll up there we were down 2-1 at half time and now unfortunately an early red card there in the second half to Basaroge made sure that RB Leipzig kicked on there in the second half to hand us a 4-1 defeat a little bit of payback for the two wins that we got over those guys in last year's Champions League group stage that does mean that we really need a win from the first game of today's episode or even the second one but I do think it's probably more likely that we do beat Palazan at home than travel to Italy and beat Inter Milan but those are the two games that we do have coming up in today's episode off the back of that Malka Bikram final at the end of last week we have had quite a few domestic games just to keep ourselves fresh since then we have nearly completed the league season we're not going to spend too long on these results because we have already wrapped up the league title but three fairly comfortable wins there at home to Akrones and Breda Blick and away at Phil Kier we just need to win that last game against Nats KA and we will go through the season without losing a game domestically at all. We have completed a perfect season in the league once before, but I'm not too sure if we also won all of our cup games in that year as well. We have done that this year, so it would be really nice to go through the domestic season without losing or drawing a game. But before that last game that we do play against Nats, all of the places for European football next season are already locked in with us in the Champions League qualifiers. HK, Nats, KR and Nats are all guaranteed to be in Conference League qualifying. I am quite hopeful for HK next season in Conference League qualifying off the back of those guys making the Champions League group stages this season, especially if they still have the same players that we have loaned out to them this season on their books next season. But hopefully that good form that we have had domestically since the end of last week is going to give us just a little bit of a confidence boost heading into this game coming up against Partizan. If we have a quick look at the data hub, we have met Partizan a few times before past meetings, we played them in the Conference League knockouts a few seasons ago. I believe that was the year that we did make the final of that competition before losing that to Brighton. But we bet those guys 7-2 on aggregate. And off the back of that, we played them in the group stages two seasons ago and picked up 2-0 two, two wins. So it's a team that we do have a good record against, albeit last season. They did finish above Liverpool in their group. So we certainly need to owe these guys a lot of respect. Going into this one, one enforced change going into this game for us as well with that suspension to Basaroge. That means that Brynjar Gautasong comes into the DM role for us. But apart from that, we are at full strength. And hopefully we can pick up our first win of this year's group stages of the Champions League here against Paz and put ourselves into at least third spot in the group and at least try and get ourselves into a position to qualify for the Europa League, albeit still early days in this group only on the second match week and we'll come back shortly for the first game of today's episode from the Laugaras Villa hopefully pick up some points here at home against Partizan. And we do have TV coverage for these Champions League games of course so here are 
the team sheets on screen now. There is our lineup as we ran through before. Galtason comes in. For the suspended Bussero Gay there is part is in quite similar formation to what we are using, but with two midfielders and three attacking midfielders. A big game in terms of the bottom of the group, hopefully at home here. We can pick up a win and get on the board in this year's Champions League group stage. And we have to wait till the 16 minute mark for the first highlight of this one. A corner to Partizan. That one just goes past the upright at the moment. Leipzig leading away at Inter as well, but still nil all here after 20 minutes. But the best chance has gone to Partizan. And down the other end about five minutes later, and now we have a corner of our own. Rakazan put that into the mixer, but one of their players does head that away, and we do have the ball just outside the box. Rakazan with a wonderful strike, working his way back in from taking that corner and just curves that around both the defender and the goalkeeper, and we do grab a 1-0 lead here about halfway through the first half. Rakazan involved in this move quite a bit. He has been in superb form, and that is one heck of a finish. Nothing the goalkeeper can do about that one. 1-0 one Volsunger after 23 minutes. And inside the last 10 minutes of the first half, not many highlights in this one so far, but we do have a throw in here just outside the box. And Giroud playing some one-twos there with John Matthews, plays that back to Galtason. And we still have the ball here just outside the box. Zimmerman gets through it, forces a very good save there out of the goalkeeper, but somehow he does not pick that up. And Kalen Rakasan picks up a double. That is very sloppy work there from the Partizan goalkeeper initially. A great save there. Off the shot of Zimmerman, that came from that good pass there from Rubio Rakasani. He was just getting there slowly but steadily and eventually gets there before Markovic in goal. And it is 2-0 Volsunger, about seven minutes shy of half time. And up to the 42-minute mark, a little bit of late action here in this first half of a 2-0 lead. The Partizan goalkeeper pumps that deep. Rakasan there trying to link up with Rubio, but Partizan might have a chance here to try and grab a goal back before half time, albeit that's a good interception there from Frederick Lars, and we might try and get something going on the counter-attack ourselves. Zimmerman plays that back to Tiago Polo, the man mountain at the back for us there, so good in the air, and plays that back to him yet again we do. Now we get inside the opposition half, Giroud up to Rakasan. He is on a hat-trick, plays it over to Alejandro Mays, a good short passing. Rubio nearly gets a shot off there, good side tackle from the Partizan defender to keep the scoreline. At 2 0, just shy of half time, but we do have one more highlight here before we do head into the sheds potentially with a 2 0 lead, and it's a bit messy at the back. Zimmerman tries to rifle one there into the top right corner, but that is a great save from Markovic in goal there for Partizan. So most of the action in this half has been in our favor. Galdazon with a header just goes over the bar, and it does look like we will be heading into the sheds with a 2 0 lead here at half time. Very happy with how most of that half went. The first highlight was in Parazan's favour from a set piece, but off the back of that, we have looked good. Kalen Rakazan picking up a double. He has been in superb form since joining the club in that Mazala on attack role, but fairly happy with how things are going here at half time. We may just make one change at the back, though, with John Matthews having picked up a yellow card. I think we can afford to take him off for Ian Carlo just to make sure that we don't blow a lead here because we have a right back easing off tackles, but that's the one change we'll make going into the second half with a 2-0 lead. And we have a highlight immediately from the restart. Parazan will try and get a goal back immediately here after going into the sheds. 2-0 down, some short passing right around the centre circle. Ian Carlo, though, a good tackle in there, fresh off the bench, and we are on the counter attack, although can't quite link up there with Frederick Larson. It is Parazan trying to get something going here down the right-hand side early in the second half, Sasha Jala, a player from our Blue Hell Worldwide save with Sporting Kansas City on the last FM, tries to play a ball forward there, but we do get the ball back, and Zimmerman starts to charge forward. What can he do? Slide tackle, and the referee has given a penalty that looks like a very, very soft one. Not too sure if this will get upheld, even if it was inside the box, to be fair. That was quite a questionable decision, but the penalty has been awarded in Rakasan, our regular penalty taker, has a hat-trick chance, blasts it wide, that might be a little bit of justice for that call there, I think, a good chance to go 3-0 up, but still 2-0 as we approach the 50-minute mark. And we have to wait all the way up to the 68-minute mark for our next highlight here in the second half, we just keep the ball there down the right-hand side, play that all the way back to Hulavik, but do keep possession here, Thiago Polo takes his time, and we try and get something going here down this right-hand side, good short passing Zimmerman, Back to Galtason, he's picked up a yellow, we play a ball over there 
for Frederick Larson just outside the box, inside the byline. Interesting pass that all the way back to Alejandro Meza, but Galtason will play that back to Elias Anderson on the halfway line. Tiago Polo gets us moving forward. Larson to Rubio. Good short passing here. Great hat trick chance again for Rakasan, but that time a good save. Our La Parazan goalkeeper Rakasan certainly should have his hat trick by now. That penalty early in the half, and then that chance there they deal with that corner. 70 minutes gone. We are still 2 0 up, and we are going to make our second substitution at this time as well because Nicholas Zimmerman is down to a red heart. So we will bring, I think, Fabio Maliano on for him. That goal scoring touch on the right wing might be useful against opposition like Parazan. 20 minutes left, still 2 0 up. And up to the 75 minute mark, we are going to make our last substitution. Bring our Galtason is actually on a red heart as well as a yellow card initially. Was going to take off Giroud there, but with him not being on a yellow card, Galtrasson will come off for Maurizio Goffi for these last 15 minutes, where we do still hold a 2-0 lead. And right before we can make that substitution, we do get shown a highlight there. Poor clearance from the Parazan goalkeeper, although Rakasan briefly loses position, but we do get it back. Nice ball over the top there for Frederick Larson. Blast that wide, and we are still 2-0 up with just under 15 minutes left. And shortly off the back of that substitution, we do have another highlight. We play that back to Maurizio Goffi, fresh on the pitch. Rakasan still looking for his hat trick. There's a great chance for Rubio. Tries to chip the goalkeeper. Markovic reads it like a book, and it is still 2-0 with just over 10 minutes left. And we do have a highlight inside injury time in this game. There are four minutes of it. It does look like we are going to hang on here for a win to get three points on the board, which is much needed at home against opposition like Parazan, even though this is only the second match week, but we are still on the attack here. Nice ball that from Mariano Far Post, and finally we get our third goal. It is through Frederick Larson after a few good chances earlier in the second half to both Rakasan and Rubio, but Fabio Mariano is a good little option both up front and on the wings for us. Plays a nice ball over there for Frederick Larson. Completely unmarked open header puts that away, and it looks like we'll be taking this one out 3-0 here at the Lao Garda Zabola as we now only have one minute of added time left, albeit we do have a late highlight in this one. Can we grab one more goal, or will it be Partizan who do grab a consolation goal? But nonetheless, this result is certainly going to help out our goal differential off the back of that thumping that we did cop from Leipzig yesterday, and Frederick Larson will pick up a double that was a little bit soft there, I think, from their goalkeeper, and it's a late double to Frederick Larson to make sure we do win 4-0, and that should make up for that goal differential that we did cop last week against Leipzig, as I said at the end of last week, not yesterday, but nonetheless, Frederick Larson, good shot there to pick up a late double, even if the goalkeeper in defence probably should have closed that one down a little bit better, but two late goals there, and we do move up to three points, and by the looks of it, we might even move up to second in the group because of those late goals there, as it does look like RB Leipzig did hold on there to beat Inter Milan away from home in the other game in this group. But that's a good performance. Two first half goals there to Rakasan. Should have really had a hat-trick, even if that penalty decision was very, very dodgy. But Frederick Larson does chip in with two late goals. Leipzig must have held on to a 1-0 win because we jump above Inter Milan into second, thanks to goal differential. So that is going to be a big game coming up in the second one of today's episode to see who puts themselves into prime position for Champions League knockouts in this group. But that's what we wanted to start off today's episode. A win at home against Palace, and we'll come back shortly and check in on how HK are getting on prior to that game in Italy against Inter Milan. And we are about to play the second game of today's episode against Inter Milan. Unfortunately, we have some injury news going into this one. That was probably coming considering we have got episode number 111 today, but there is confirmation RB Leipzig did pick up that 1-0 win there away at Inter Milan. So they have started off this group stage in very good form and we move up there are the other results on the match week that we did just play and off the back of that the results from the other side of the draw the teams that you would expect to win winning those games and that does include Sevilla picking up a 3-0 win at home there against HK so so far HK will be rooted to the bottom of group C I think it is fair to say we'll just wait for that to load and indeed they are on zero points does look like they're not going to offer us too much help here in the group stages of the Champions League off the back of their great effort in qualifying just to reach the group stages of this competition. Maybe they would have been better off down in the Europa League as we did suspect when the group draw did take place. But before we do take Inter Milan on, 
in the second versus third clash in the group. As I said, this one is going to be quite big to see who will get a leg up in terms of finishing second in our group as RB Leipzig are probably going to end up on nine points off the back of their next game against Partizan. But unfortunately, in episode 111, we do have some injury news heading into the second game. Of today's episode, Benjamin Rubio and Frederick Larson have both twisted their ankle and knee, respectively Benjamin Rubio out for 10 days to 3 weeks. That probably means he also misses out on the return leg at home in tomorrow's episode against Inter Milan. So that is a big blow for us. Our club captain is out for the next two games. Hopefully he'll be back for the last two though of the Champions League group stage. And also Frederick Larson with his twisted knee is out for three to seven days as well. So that's two starting players who will be missing from our team here to take on Inter Milan in Italy. In terms of what that means for our starting 11 for this game, Chaka Traore will start on the left wing. That's probably not too bad of an option. He is in quite good form. He comes into this off the back of a very good domestic season. Also, Fabio Maliano will get a start up front for us. Unfortunately, in terms of going for the perfect domestic season, we absolutely bottled it. We took on nuts away from home. Unfortunately, we conceded a goal at the 17 minute mark and could only pull back one in the second half. So we do finish off the domestic season with a draw, which is a little bit frustrating. Not quite the perfect season, but nonetheless, we do go unbeaten and secure the league title there by 19 points. No changes to the positions, which we did show you guys earlier before that first game of today's episode. But off the back of that, we did beat HK 3-0 in a friendly so hopefully that bumps our confidence back up off the back of not quite going through the domestic season with a perfect record but we'll come back shortly with team sheets from Italy for this big game in terms of which team will get in that Champions League qualification position away at Inter Milan. And here are the team sheets for this big away game at Inter Milan there they are with a 4-4-2 they're slightly mixing their form at the moment but that is a very good Inter Milan team in terms of us a few extra changes that I forgot to mention before off the back of those injuries Guy is back in in the DM role now that his suspension has been served and also we are starting Andy Harwood over Alejandro Meza today just to see what he can do out there seeing as he is slightly higher rated at the moment but anything out of this game away from home will be a bonus and put us in a great position to potentially make the Champions League knockouts for the second straight season. And very early on in this one, we do have a highlight. We are playing in our white uniforms today into Milan at home in the black and blue stripes. A long ball played forth there for Fabio Maliano. Takes it round the goalkeeper. It's an absolute sitter and he has blown it. What a bottle of a job that was. And that is a great chance gone begging for us to go 1-0 up nice and early in this one, albeit. We're putting some good pressure on them at the back here. And Fabio Maliano gets the ball back. Zimmerman now with a great chance, but it's a weak as effort. That's two great chances inside the first five minutes for us. And it remains nil all. How much are those going to prove costly come the end of this game? Especially that first one there to Fabio Maliano, the inter goalkeeper. Gave him an absolute open sight of goal. And he lifted it over the bar. That is an absolutely shocking effort there from our young Italian striker. And now Lautaro Martinez will get a chance here on the counter attack. Thankfully, puts that wide after the ball ballooned up to him off the back of that slide tackle. All action early, but it remains nil all. Up to the 13 minute mark for our next highlight. We do have a free kick here inside our own half. We did have a highlight there on the eight minute mark, but it was a shot from a very tight angle there. From John Matthews, the Inter Milan goalkeeper comes searching again for the ball. This time finds a teammate, and it is Nicola Barella there. It's a great chance here for Blowman. Just puts that right into the path of Furlovic. So some good chances now for both teams. But coming up to the 15-minute mark, it does remain nil all, albeit we now have a throw in Chaka Traore. He finds Zimmerman there on the right-hand side. Matthews, good one, two here. Zimmerman just holds up the ball, and Kalen Rakasan. Picks up yet another Champions League goal. Certainly so far, hard not to argue that he has been our player of the group stages based on what he did in that first game of today's episode. And he grabs a goal in this one as well to give us a 1-0 lead away at Inter Milan. Some good work there off the front. He just rockets that into the top left corner. Nothing the goal can, can do there. And it's 1-0 Volsunger after 16 minutes. And about halfway through the first half now, it is Inter Milan with a front of their own inside our half and Lautaro Martinez 
gets in behind the defence there, just holds it up inside the byline. Barella with a shot, comes off the upright. Great chance there. A little bit unlucky there into Milan, and we do still hold a 1-0 lead. And now up to the 31-minute mark, we do have a goal kick here, which we do take short, and Elias Anderson finds Andy Harwood off the back of that, having an OK game so far coming in for Alejandro Meza, but we do keep possession here. Zimmerman tries to cut in the field. Can he slot someone away here? Plays that forward for Kalen Rakasan, who is in some great form in today's episode. Really should have a hat-trick in the first game, but got a goal there, albeit that's a poor pass that from Chaka Traor, and it gives Blowman a chance here for Inter Milan. Maybe Will Lurvik should be doing better there at his near post, but nonetheless, we do grab an equaliser here at home to Inter Milan just after the half-hour mark in this one. It's a bit unfortunate. We had a good chance there potentially on the attack, but Chaka Traore with a loose pass and Inter Milan, they strike Blowman, just takes that the wrong side there of our defence and does beat Hula Lurvik at his near post. One all with 15 minutes left in the first half. And we have a late free kick here in the first half. Can we grab our lead back? Looking for Chaka Traore there at the far post, but the ball does not quite reach him. But Elias Anderson is back in position, plays that through to Bussero Gay, two players who probably should have been at the far post there for that free kick. But nonetheless, we do keep possession here and hopefully you can get one more chance here before half time. Mariano just holds the ball up. Andy Harwood, can he slot someone away? Chaka Traore just on the edge of the box back to Harwood. We take our time here, trying to get a good shot off here late in the first half. We play that back again to Basaroge Giroud out to Zimmerman, Andy Harwood. Nice ball here for Chaka Traore, but that shot is straight at the goalkeeper. It is one all just shy of halftime still. And right before halftime, we do have another throw in this half. Chaka Traore, far post ball, but Andy Zimmerman puts that into the side netting. I say Andy Zimmerman, it was actually Nicholas Zimmerman, not too sure where the Andy came from there, but nonetheless, we do go into halftime with a one-all scoreline. You look at the stats there, it's probably fair enough, but really, Fabio Mariano, that golden chance he had in the first highlight of the game, we should probably be up by a goal in this one, but fairly happy with how we are playing. Hopefully, we can pull ahead again here in the second half, albeit we do have a highlight immediately from the restart yet again in Inter Milan playing from right to left in the second half already, make their way into our half, and the goal scorer, Blowman, plays that back for Danilo, out to Thomas Lamar there on the right-hand side, and they are trying to get something going down that side here early in the second half, as they do play that out to one of their players there on a yellow card, but hopefully we can keep doing what we did in that first half, because it was quite an even half, and potentially we probably should have taken the lead there with the chances that we did have. Great chance there for Blowman. Just puts that over the top right corner and it's still one all here early in the second half. And up to the 60 minute mark, nothing of note happening so far in the first half of this game, albeit RB Leipzig have picked up a red card, still nil all there away at Parzan. So that one could certainly juice things up for the second half of that game. But both of our wingbacks here are not performing well. So we'll bring on Ian Carlo for John Matthews and also Alejandro Meza for Andy Harwood. Still one all here inside the last half hour and straight off the back of those substitutions it is Inter Milan playing out from the back they play a long ball forward there but Rakasan wins that ball in the air for us and can we get something going here somewhat on the counter attack Zimmerman plays that back to Ian Carlo and we try and exploit them here down the right hand side Carlo on the ball again fresh on the pitch there for John Matthews nice ball over the top there for Mariano slide tackle Zimmerman falls to Rakasan this time can't quite beat the goalkeeper Still one all with just under a half hour left. And up to the 66 minute mark, not too long off the back of that last highlight, we are going to make our last substitution, Elias Anderson, only on a 6.4. So we will try out Ali Ramadan there for the last 24 minutes. And 72 minutes gone, we are trying to get something going here on the counter attack, but we can't quite link up there with the small Fabio Maliano up front. And it is here into Milan on the counter attack. And Martinez tries to get something going here. Down the left-hand side, plays the ball into the mix of Blowman. Just holds things up, and that is far too simple for Carlos Sola and Inter Milan. Do have a lead, some good work there. Down the left-hand side, and they are now 2-1 up with just under 20 minutes left here of the second half. It was a nice ball out there to Lautaro Martinez. Down the left-hand side, unfortunately, Ian Carlo couldn't quite stop that ball and from there. It was just too many numbers inside the box. Sola slots that away. 2-1 Inter with just over 15 minutes left. And only a few minutes off the back of that goal there to Inter. We do have a throw in and Fabio Maliano there 
I think has got pushed in the back. That would be a very soft penalty considering Fabio Maliano only about 1.5 metres high. Not exactly an aerial threat, but nonetheless, Bastoni has pushed him over and Kalen Rakasan gets a chance to make up from that penalty. From the first game of today's episode, he does. And we grab an almost instant equaliser here in Italy. And it is 2 all with just over 10 minutes left. As I said, that's a really dumb idea that from Inter Milan pushing a short striker over in the box. Kalen Rakasan makes the most of the penalty. 2 all here away from home. And up to the A4 minute mark, it is a corner here for Inter Milan. They go near post. It's a good clearance off the line there from Bassaro Gay. That was going right into the top right corner. But nonetheless, Inter Milan do still have possession here. Barella unleashes one, forces a good save that out of Huelovic. And it will still be Inter Milan on the attack with yet another corner. Lautaro Martinez far post and forces yet another good save that out of Huelovic. This is a really good spell, as commentary said there. To Inter Milan, Martinez puts this one into the Mexico's far post, I think. We might have just returned the favour. Tiago Polo, who's usually so good in the air, might have pushed over an Inter Milan player there. Unfortunately, he has that soft. That makes up for the one on Mariano just before. And hopefully, Huel Lubick can pull off another great save here. But Sola sends him the wrong way. And after just grabbing an equaliser, we give Inter Milan a chance right back from the penalty spot themselves and they take it and it is now 3-2 here with only four minutes left. A very topsy-turvy game, but Inter Milan in control here with not long left. And unfortunately, that will be full time in this one. That late penalty given away there by Thiago Polo is the difference maker as well as, of course, that very good early chance which Fabio Mariano did miss in the first half. It was a very entertaining game, that one, but unfortunately, we do suffer a 3 2 defeat away from home. But that is certainly encouraging signs going back home against these guys, and we will take them on in tomorrow's episode. But in the end, it's probably a game we should have at least got a draw out of. But nonetheless, that's some encouraging signs. Hopefully, we can get some points off these guys when we do take them on in tomorrow's episode back in Iceland. But a bit of a missed opportunity there. Thanks to that late penalty given away. And it is Inter Milan who do pick up a 3-2 win there. We'll just get through this post-match interview and see what happened in the other game in the group between Partizan and Leipzig. And indeed that red card did have an impact because Partizan have upset RB Leipzig. That game actually played at Partizan's home stadium. So that closes this group right back up. We are joint there with Partizan, albeit still above them. Thanks to our goal differential, but now only three points behind both Inter and RB Leipzig with games against both of those teams coming up in our next two at our home ground in Iceland. So this group is certainly still right up for grabs. No one's safe in any position. We'll come back shortly and check in on how HK did in their third match week before we wrap things up. And we've gone for today off the back of that loss there to Inter Milan. A very entertaining game, unfortunately, coming out on the wrong side of that one. And unfortunately, HK have suffered defeat there in their third match week as well, albeit not too unexpected, only losing 2-0 at home to Bayern Munich. Not actually too bad of an effort that one. I think it is fair to say, but we'll scroll up, show you guys the other results from the other half of the draw on that match day. And if you missed them before, those other results from our side of the draw there as well. So what that means for our group at the end of today's episode, we have moved up from bottom to third, but joint on points there with Palazan off the back of that somewhat upset victory at home there against 10 men. RB Leipzig, three points behind both Leipzig and Inter, albeit our next two games are at home against both of those opposition. We know from last season, we can beat Leipzig and Inter Milan. We just gave them a very tight run thing there away from home. So maybe we can get some points out of both of those games but that will do it for today's episode if you did enjoy it then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well in tomorrow's episode as i said the replay against inter milan at home that is our last game as well before the end of season review so we will also have that coming up in tomorrow's episode as well so until then thank you very much for watching Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.